top of his shoulder. There are little divots on the top of his shoulders right here and here. So if you guys go like this with your shoulder, and if you don't have a shirt on, but well, if you don't have to get a tank top on, so me, you'll see divots in your shoulder. You see these divots? Those are the eyes of your shoulder. So from those divots, if I draw down, that tells me where her medial deltoid head is. If I draw to the front, it tells me where her front deltoid head is. And if I go from that divot behind, it's posterior delt. So hold strong for me. You see that thing that popped up? Relax. Do it again. What is that? This is a posterior deltoid. If you're a therapist, if you have that posterior deltoid, you come underneath posterior deltoid, I go all the way in until I feel the scapula. When I'm in on the scapula, I rub this little muscle here that I'm flicking against, and what is that? This is the teres minor. These things, people te treating teres minor. <laughs> people don't do this to this extent. So when you're there, the better you are at palpating, the more you know what's happening. You know what makes these, these two eyes of the shoulder? It's the coracoid process. The process is with the extension of the scapular spine that comes across here. Just underneath, you have the head of the humerus. If I come from over here, I go underneath her clavicle laterally, I fall into this depression. And the depression, if I push laterally more, I feel a, a, a little nublet of bone. That's, a, that's an anatomical term, it's a nublet. That nublet's the coracoid process. If I fall underneath that, I can actually grab the head of the humerus. So now I can go from the, po the posterior eye down, and from that coracoid lateral down, I can grab the head of the humerus, and now I can feel it move, because I know where I am, and I know what I'm touching. So when I say to you guys, you know, you maybe you want to go to an FR course, even if you're a trainer, people go, oh, that's a lot of money, I don't know if it's going to benefit me. It only benefits you in the context that you learn it. If you learn it and then apply it like this, it's going to be just as beneficial to you as it is to a therapist. So when I'm finding end range, I can do it better because of my palpation skills. Does that make sense? So we're back here. I find end range. Okay? So I find end range in here. So while I'm here, I say try to relax, just deep breathe. I want the bend to come from right here. So now I'm giving him manual biofeedback. I'm putting my fingers in the eyes of the shoulder. I'm showing him that there's a divot here, and I want him to crush my finger to keep the dip, to keep that finger in place. This is where I want you to move from. I don't want you to move from here. I'm not saying this to you guys. I'm talking to my client. This is how we talk. I don't want you to move from here. I don't want you to use your head in any way to help that shoulder up. I only want this area to hold in place, okay? So now I have him at the end range, so I'm gonna tell him to breathe all the way in. Now, start to pack air into your abdomen, and just start to become a solid statue. Really focus on contracting in through here. Squeeze my finger in here.